All right, guys, so in this video, we are moving on to the painting of the rest of the human figures and the water. So I use browns of different tones to paint the figures. For example, this uh, man, this young man over here. We have all these different kinds of uh, dark browns that actually use to paint the surrounding, the, the, the outer part of the arms and the body. And then later on, I'm going to combine these dark browns with some of the light browns. And we're going to make sure that it actually reflects very accurately the skin tone of the person itself. Right, so using the brush, I just combine all these dark colors with all the light colors. And so this is something that, you know, um, I use a technique that I use to, to paint skin tones. So the skin tone would consist of, you know, um, dark part and a light part because it actually shows the volume of the body of the arm and so we would want to use um, the brush to kind of like paint the lighter part and the darker part and combining them together right, so right now you can see that it's still not very accurately combined but we will use the brush to kind of like do it better as we move along so we can see that the right hand side there is made up of darker kind of browns and we can see that the left hand side of the arm is actually lighter and we can have you know this darker browns and this darker brown is now being combined with the lighter brown and so we are now using the brush to help us with the combining of these light tones All right so this is very important in helping us to get the right skin tones, right? So using that small brush, I'm just just trying to paint the hair of the of the man, and also of course trying to paint the swimming trunks, the dark blue trunks. And so using the um, brush, when the skin tone is dry, just added another layer of brown, so that we can now have a more accurately depicted kind of skin tone. And doing the same for his legs as well, and also of course his face right now, and Right now, you can see that it's very nicely done. All right, so right now, we are moving on to this man right at the front. So using the same technique, um, the same kind of uh, movement of the brush and the colors that I use, I actually did the same thing with this man's skin tone right there. As you can see, I'm using different kinds of browns, dark browns, dark strokes, yellow, yellows that are combined with the browns and so on and so forth and also now using the color pencil to help me with the facial features and um, that is very important as well to use this dark brown color pencil to actually do this person's eyes and nose and mouth and so we have all these you know features that are being done by using that black color pencil and that dark brown color pencil and so we have you know all these things that are being done in order to uh, make sure that we have all these facial features in place and that will um, really have, make it look very realistic and attractive so using that red color pencil and that light brown color pencil and also using this small brush i'm just trying to make sure that the nose is in place and then just trying to combine the nose with the rest of the face using the brush and just trying to make sure that the top part of the nose is lighter than the bottom part so as you can see i'm um, painting these facial features is not really um that easy and simple but with the right techniques we are able to arrive at you know this uh, kind of result so using that um red color pencil I'm just doing the mouth area and so we need to be very intricate and very careful with our rendering of the facial features especially when a face is so small and so by using the black color pencil and also the um, red color pencil we're just trying to make sure that we have all this um, red and brown areas that are being done and all these different kinds of uh, red and brown 
and also of course a little bit of white to add a little bit of highlights on the lips. All these things actually create this very, very um, nicely done kind of facial feature for this man right at the front. Okay, moving on to this figure on the behind the man. So this lady who is um, picking up some water from the Ganges River and actually washing her face with it. And so we need to have a lot of dark green kind of tones using a small brush and using those dry brush techniques. I'm just adding all these, you know, um, paint like yellows and reds and greens in order to paint the costume that she's wearing and you can see that there's a lot of details right there so just using the small brush to actually help me with it and I'm just trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of details and dry brush techniques and all these browns and all these you know reds and yellows that are being done and of course light browns and dark browns for the skin tone and right now we are moving on to the water. So I used greens, browns, blues and whites to paint the water again. The water is made up of all these different colors and we are going to use some of the strokes of the brush to actually create all these ripples in the water. So there are a few ways of doing water. One is to um, really do the surface of the water first by using those strokes and filling up those white areas later. The second way is to just use a large brush to paint the first layer on the water first and then once it's dry or semi-dry, we will paint the um, darker stroke on top of the water to show the ripples. Right, so if you want it to look a little bit more realistic and you know lifelike like the photo, we will paint the darker areas first, darker strokes first and then we can fill up the white areas later so that will look a little bit more rigid and lifelike but if you want to try to improvise a little bit then we can um, paint the first layer first and then when it's semi-dry we can see the second layer actually spreading out so that will actually also make use of the um, spreading nature the flowing nature and the water kind of uh, effect of the watercolor so we have all these different kinds of uh, greys and all these different kinds of greens and you know of course leaving white some of the areas that are actually done with you know um this brush because we need those white areas to show the splashing of the water so this is because this young man right there is coming out of the, of the water in a very quick kind of pace and so we can see all this water that is splashing um from his 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 legs Okay, so using that brown paint to blend in with the green to show his skin which is underneath the water to show the transparency of the water right so all these things are now being added all these colors which make up the shoreline which is very light in terms of gray and using that color pencil to help us with some of the details so we have some of the white kind of uh, details on top of the water to show the water kind of splashing away splashing around and that will give us a more lifelike depiction of the water all right so we have all these you know different kinds of strokes different kinds of uh, details that I actually use my small little brush to do and so we have this browns and we have this uh, reds and we have all these grays and we have this white and so on and so forth so painting that container that is resting on that little surface right there so I use color pencils and watercolor to paint the humans in the water right so we are now moving on to the painting of all these humans right so you can see right there I'm actually using a small brush to paint the hair so this mass, <clears throat> this group of humans right there is done by using the small brush and painting all these small little details that will make up all these humans as we will now um, see. So using the small brush, I'm just trying to make sure that we have this um, strokes for, the, for this woman right there that is being done. Again, these figures are made up of shapes. So we need to think about these figures in terms of shapes and not trying to depict them as 
um, similar to the photograph as possible because when we think in terms of shapes, then we can turn, think in terms of constructing those shapes and how these shapes actually can link together to form the real life, um, the lifelike kind of a composition, um, the life, how it actually represents the original object. And so that is what makes up um, the painting process, right? So thinking about the shape, and thinking about the colors and think about how these shapes and colors actually relate to each other is the key to doing paintings that represent all these details. So using that small little brush, I'm just trying to make sure we have these red tones that are combined with these dark brown tones and just trying to use a lot of all these dry brush techniques that is now being combined with the reds. Alright, so very interestingly, we have all these reds um, for this woman's body. So we can see that um, the people here actually, um, in the morning, they are showering and they are bathing in this Ganges River. And they are really um, very devout um, people because um, you can see from their actions and their, you know, prayerful kind of... Uh, attitude when they actually um, do the bathing and the showering in the, in the river and you can see that you know there's a lot of all these Indian people who actually come here to be able to have this experience right so it's a very special place and tourists are just amazed at the scenes that they find here with all these very very cool scenes that I'm actually trying to reproduce right now for you and this skin tone right here is done using that brown and um, we have this you know um, arm that is consisting of the fingers as well so using a small brush we're just trying to depict all these different kinds of details that we see right so just using the small brush I'm just trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of things that are going on and then we will now move on to the other arm the other hand and so we have all these you know very nice kind of uh, textures and lines and shapes and so that is something which is very very um, interesting to see you know that is coming out so again, we want to just ignore some of the details of the face, maybe just adding a little bit of strokes right there. So you can this, see that this woman is actually holding up her right arm, her right hand to her nose, and her left arm is just folded upwards. So we need to depict this woman in terms of shapes, okay? because we can't really see the exact details, but her posture and her body language and her position is now being determined because I actually understand her body kind of position and I depicted her using shapes. All right, so we'll now do the same thing for the rest of the figures. So I'm just using the black paint to paint the hair and to paint the, um, you know, the um, head and tr just trying to make sure that again, we will not paint the whole hair the whole head with the same color, the same black color, but rather we will want to have all these different kinds of uh, light tones and darker tones. Right, so using the small brush, we're just trying to make sure that we have all these details in. And again, using that small little brush, we are just trying to make sure that we have all these details that will really um, make it look um, really, really convincing and really realistic. So I'm using the large brush, larger brush here to paint the skin tone of this man that is, you know, um, to the left hand side. And of course, um, using those browns and trying to combine those browns with the blacks All right so that is actually very very um convincing and very nice to look at so using that small brush i'm just trying to combine again those brown tones with 
the dark tones and uh, we can have all these you know different kinds of uh, reds and different kinds of uh, browns and of course these reds will be combined with all those strokes you know and of course having this um, light browns we will be able to combine this light browns with the dark browns and you can see his arm right there is consisting of all these different tones of brown with the bottom part darker than the top part because the top part is reflecting the sunlight from the sun and of course the forearm is darker because it's kind of like folded in so the sunlight can't really shine on it as compared to um, the triceps and the biceps okay the upper arm is much lighter than the forearm Alright, so leaving out some white spaces for the um, kind of water that is on the arm itself, on the forearm, and just painting in all these, you know, different kinds of colors for the fingers. And right now we are moving on to this woman in the water who is like almost three quarters submerged into the water, who is just beside that red woman that we just painted. And so painting in all these red tones that will represent her shirt. So many of the people here are actually wearing red and you can see that all these you know red tones are actually coming out really well and we are just trying to um, make sure that we have all these reds and we have all these you know red costumes that really go very well with the water and of course the browns at the back and so just using that small brush and just trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of browns that are being added and this will give us a very very nice kind of uh, colors and texture so you can see right there the man is actually you know made up of all these very nice brown textures and very nice brown tones and this man is really coming out alive as we are now you know seeing with um, how I actually used my brush to paint the bottom part of his arm thus making sure that we have all these very nice kind of uh, skin tones that is being depicted again using his arm his hand to cover his face because he's bathing in that river and now using those very light gray tones to paint this woman on um, the head because she has this very short hair and so we are using that gray tone to kind of like represent the white hair on her head so using the color pencils to help me and using some of the black color pencil in order to make the folds on her dress that is done because that is there because of the you know the folds on 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 the shirt itself okay so using this dark um kind of colors i'm just trying to uh, use all these you know different kinds of browns and reds and and uh browns um, light browns and dark browns and all these different kinds of browns will really give us you know some very nice uh, kind of colors and right now i'm actually using the small little brush to help me uh, the, and also the color pencils to help me um, deal with the details and you can see right there that the woman has a darker brown on the chin area as compared to a lighter brown near to her forehead. So again, using different tones of brown in order to paint this uh, person. So right now we have all these human figures and again this man who is bowing down with his head. And we can't really see all, all their um, expressions. So we will need to leave white um, the middle part of the face which we'll later on fill in with the color pencil again using that color pencil to help us with the painting of the human faces and we do not need to paint every sing draw in every single detail for the human face because it is not possible and that is because the human figures are very small so right now we are using this orange, this brown, to actually depict the um, brown kind of dress. And I'm just using the small little brush to help with the painting of this, of these figures right there. Right, so we have all these uh, small little 
human figures and we have all these small little strokes right so of course um, we're just trying to make sure that there is a lot of all these you know very nice brown tones and skin tones that are depicted using this small little brush and we're just trying to make sure that we have all these brown tones that make up the faces and you can see right now the face is actually coming out alive and using that color pencil to help me just touch up a little bit on that man's face drawing those dark strokes for the separations between those fingers using the white color pencil to paint some of the reflections on the skin so further enhancing the skin tones right so you can see right now that there is a lot of all these different kinds of reds browns dark browns light browns and dry brush and leaving whites and all these color pencils also help to um, be able to add in the facial features because it is really difficult to paint with watercolor so these color pencils actually help me to be able to draw them well and it is very important for us to you know be able to draw it well okay using that yellow color pencil this is actually helping me to make sure that we have you know some dry um, red tones yellow tones and some making sure that the face and everything is fine and so you can see that this mass, this group of humans right there in the middle are coming out really, really nicely. Right, so this watercolor at its really detailed kind of level. And I really enjoy painting watercolor in a very detailed manner because that actually gives me a lot of satisfaction when it comes to depicting all these very tiny details that actually bring a lot of life to the painting <clears throat> the painting itself and so you can see right there i'm actually using some of the dark black color pencil and some of the red color pencil in order to paint this human figure right there which is not that straightforward to actually paint but <clears throat> um we are using that small little um brush to help me with depicting all their details so right now we are done with that and we are just moving on to the painting of the background where we have all these you know different um grays we have all these browns and all these you know um different kinds of uh, colors that you're seeing right now and using the reds and the blacks we are just trying to paint some of the items on top and using the small brush, we are just trying to make sure that we have this blue tone for the man and some dark blue tones for the trousers that he is he's wearing. And so this man is actually like very far away. And so we can't really see at all his facial features. And he's holding this basket of oranges and, you know, just use a brown tone to represent his face and some dark strokes for his body. So right there, we have this man who is bathing in the far corner right there. He kind of like have a little tummy right there. And so by using um, my brush to paint um, different tones of brown, again, we can see all these different kinds of browns that are being added to depict the skin tone. Right, so um, very quickly, we are just about to finish the human figures right here. And you can see how I actually did all these details um, for the human figures using my small little brush, using my, you know, um, brush to, and color pencil to actually help me to gain <clears throat> gain access, access to all these colors that are not so straightforward to get. And also combining all these different colors to be able to form this amazing kind of com composition. Right, so using that small little brush, I'm just trying to um, complete um, this folded arms of the man and just trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of reds and pinks and yellows that are depicting the man. And so it is very important for us to be able to, you know, um, 
discern the colors and trying to be able to reproduce these colors um, when it comes to painting um, the man itself. Um, all these different kinds of people and of course there's a lot of ways that we can play with the browns but um, some of the good ways is actually to combine dark browns and light browns together with orange and yellows and of course a little bit of dark blue as well. Okay so just finishing up some of the details here and using the small brush I'm just trying to make sure that we have all these uh, orange strokes. Okay just trying to touch up this area before we actually move on to the very final part of the painting. Okay, using my brush to just touch up all those areas that were left white, just trying to make them look more complete. Using the blue color pencil to add in more of those blue highlights and using my um, dark brown, we are just trying to make sure that we have all these, you know, different kinds of uh, browns and blacks and light browns. Again, you can see this folded man of the arm, a uh, folded arm of the man that there is this darker kind of a color at the bottom because it shows the kind of shadows and then we have this you know reds and these reds are being combined with these dark browns in order to form this very nice kind of a color combination so again we have all these you know different kinds of uh, colors and we can see very subtly changing kind of browns um, between the arms and the bottom part is definitely darker than the top part. And of course, there's a line that separates all these different kinds, uh, all these two arms. And so we can see that um, there's a lot of uh, techniques that are actually used to paint all these different humans in different postures. And indeed, it takes a lot of patience to be able to paint all these details in such a convincing way with um, just my brush and of course just my eyes and of course with the help of color pencils. Alright, so right now we are moving on towards this human figures on the left hand side. Oh, sorry, on the just to the top of this man with the folded arms. Alright, so using the um, kind of a brush just trying to make sure that we have all these um, grays that are being added and um, just trying to make sure that we have all this you know black and that is <clears throat> very important for us to have all these dark tones combined with the light tones as well <clears throat> right so again we have all this you know um browns and using those browns we're just trying to make sure that we have all these things in place and that will really help us to have you know all these very rich and very interesting kinds of browns so again with the small human figures uh, we do not need to paint the um, facial features but we will need to paint some of the body parts using the um, color pencil to help us and of course using different browns for the bodies and using different colors for the pants the the shirts and everything else so using some of the um, warm tone kind of color pencil to help us with the face and of course some blues to help us with some of the highlights and all these different things are coming together and you can see that I'm actually trying to reproduce this entire group of humans in a very nice and a very convincing way so that you can see their expressions for the group in the front and of course the different body um, postures and uh, positions for those people at the back and so this is a very good way to represent humans just by observing them and trying to reproduce their skin tones their costumes the colors on their costumes and of course their postures and all these things that separate them and how we can combine all these colors and elements together hey everyone it's ky tom here 
Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed my video, please hit the like button and comment down below. Do consider to subscribe to my channel for more art videos. Check out the links on the description below to find out more about my art and I hope to see you in the next one.